Good evening and salutations, my Days of Our Lives fans. Um, I'm gonna be honest, not really a lot happened in this episode. Um, Lonnie and Eli named the babies. Um, the boy's name is Carver. The girl's name is Julia. Um, but they call her Jules. Other than that, the only thing that really happened was after Abe and, um, Julia was looking at the kids. They walked away and then there was some some stranger that was just like lurking and he looked at you know he he walked over and he looked at all the babies or whatever and he saw like their babies and then that was about it um and then that yeah not really a lot happened with them but i guess we're gonna find out more about who is ever lurking around and here's the thing i'm guessing whoever is planning on taking these kids i think it's gonna be jake's um mother you know, the one that, um, crashed the, um, that crashed Lonnie's wedding. I think that's who it's going to be. Uh, Jennifer apologizes to Kate about, you know, the whole, you know, blaming her for sleeping with Jack and everything like that, realizing it was Jake. They sit down, they have a talk, and, um, you know, at this point, Kate is like, you know, we're done, you know, um, cause she didn't want, at one point, you know, it came down to, she didn't want, you know, Chad to find out about, you know, their relationship. But then Jennifer was like, well, it's, you know, everyone's going to find out, you know, Abby's going to tell. So that can be the only reason why. And, you know, Kate says something about how, you know, she always wanted to have power like Victor or like Stefano or. I don't remember who it was, but she was like, she always wanted to be in the position of power. And she was sitting there talking about how, you know, Jake doesn't understand that and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, when Kate was like, oh, well, he thinks that I'm just, you know, I'm embarrassed by him. And Jennifer was like, well, are you? And she didn't say anything. And then it just cuts off. I feel like that, I feel like that that plays a part in it, you know, because she couldn't even give him a straight answer. I mean, I guess we're going to find out on Monday what the real reason of why, you know, because it was it was obviously that was more than just, you know, Chad finding out. Yeah, I, I feel like that was part of it, but there was more than that, though, and maybe she was using that as an excuse. I don't know. I guess we're going to find out on Monday. Um... Also, you know, Kate ran into um, Anna and Tony. I didn't really say too much of anything except for the fact that Anna and Tony knows about, you know, their relationship. So, um, not much was going on with Jack and Jennifer, but when Jack got to the house, you know, Anna wanted to talk to her about Gwen and just told everything, everything that they, you know, suspected, um, the fact that there was news articles and stuff like that, and at first, you know, Jack was like, you know, if you had told me this yesterday, I may not have believed you, but after talking to Jennifer, and, you know, we compare stories about Gwen and, you know, what she was sent telling us, and things just didn't add up, so, you know, at this point, you know, Anna was like, all right, so, uh, Let's go find this chick so we can run out of town. But, you know, Tony was like, you know what? Listen, this is a... He's, it's weird because he was like, well, this is Demara problem. You know, and Demara should handle this. I'm like, um... She's your wife. So, technically, she's Demara. So, you want to tell me why can't she handle this again? Because I'm, I'm a little confused. I mean, I know this is more on a personal level. Like, you know, I had a lot to do with more of Abby and, you know... Probably Jack a little bit, but saying that it was the Mara problem, and she is technically a Demara because she's in it by marriage. Mm, I feel like that's kind of her problem too, but whatever. Um, what else?
Gwen, 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 Gwen. You know, she's like the gift that just no one wants and we're just we're just stuck with her at this point. We're just stuck at this point. So, you know, Chad wakes up and he has kind of a hangover and then he's feeling all bad because, you know, he cheated on her and you know, Gwen keeps Nifty trying to whisper in his ear, like, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't feel so bad, you know, they were cheating on you, you know, she was lying to you, yada, yada, yada. But at this point, the alcohol has kind of already worn off, so I don't know exactly how much of your influence is actually working, because it feels that he's, he feels more somewhat remorseful. Somewhat. Um... You know, because he was to talking about, oh, you know, we worked so hard to get back to this place, and yada, yada, yada. It was like, well, last night, that's not what you were saying. I, I'm not going to lie. I really don't like this guy. I don't. Um, there was one point when he said to Gwen, he was like, listen, you know, I was drunk, and I took advantage of you, and I'm sorry. And I'm like, mm, you know, as much as I don't like you, I really don't like you. I mean, I've, I've hated other characters more, so he's not on a, my top list. But with that being said, I'm like, bro, as much as I don't like you, you really shouldn't be apologizing to her. You were the one that was drunk. She wasn't. Hell, if anything, she should be apologizing. You should be asking for an apology from her to some extent. It shouldn't be you. You should be sitting there saying, you took advantage of me while I was drunk. I don't know, do, does he still have some alcohol left in the system? Because none of that sound right. I know he's supposed to sit there and try to pride himself off as some sort of perfect gentleman, but, um, yeah, you don't earn an apology on this one. You really don't. Um, after that, you know, Gwen was like, you know, you should sit there and tell Abby what happened. You should sit there and let her know. And Chad, here's the thing, Chad didn't sit there and say... You know, well, I don't want her to know and I want you to keep your mouth shut. But that's pretty much the vibe that I got from him when he left. And he left. And, you know, Gwen was, you know, being the uh, POS that she was. Laughing. And, I mean, at this point, it's just... Ugh, I'm so over this character. I really am. I know that... Here's the thing. I know that certain characters need to come in there. Spice things up. You know, upheaval, you know, a, a, something to, to shake up the status quo. I get that. But it needs to be, one, there needs to be a reason why. And we haven't gotten that since day one. Um, and it's been months, I'm, just, I'm imagining. Imagine it's been months. And two, you know, even if I had some sort of slight understanding of why she did what she did and I could be like you know maybe I can kind of understand a little bit when she took advantage of somebody while they were drunk and had sex with them without their consent yeah my uh my sympathy and everything else just kind of goes out the window so I just really don't care um and I wish I could I wish I could sit there and be like oh well you know what I understand where she's coming from and, you know, she's hurt, and this is her way of getting back at people. Mine's are sleeping with somebody without their consent part. But I can understand where she's coming from, and, you know, this is going to be good. And, you know, Alicia... It, but this is just not one of those cases. It's really not. So, this is what we're stuck with. Um... What else? Now, on the other side of town, we got Jake and... I'm actually back on the other side of town. We got Jake and Abby talking, and, you know, Jake is, you know, he wakes up with his arm, you know, where Kate would be, and he wakes up, and he's like, you know, he remembered his fight that he had, and at some point, you know, Abigail knocks on the door, he answers it, and Abigail's like, you know, I've been trying to call him all night, trying to call Chad all night, and he hasn't been answering his phone, and he's been upset about, you know, the me and you thing, and... You know, this is when Jake is like, well, you know what, listen, we don't have to sit there and worry about Kate anymore because, yeah, we're done. You know, he confesses. He's like, yeah, listen, she, um, what it really comes down to is that she's embarrassed by me. And she, you know, I guess using that whole 
not having Chad find out as some sort of excuse. Um, that's not what he said, but I feel like that's more or less what he meant. Um, you know, he tries to play it off like, oh, well, you know, I was this to her and whatever, and it's, it's over, and it's, you know, it's no big deal. And, you know, Abigail can see right through it. Abigail's like, you know, you're hurt, and you're upset, and you're angry, and it's understandable. Um, there's really no consoling him, though, because I don't think that, you know, Abigail really likes Kate, and... I mean, how do you console that, you know? When he sits there and tell you she's not with me because she's embarrassed by me, it's like, you know, what What do you see, even sit there and say? And by the way, I want to sit there and talk about Kate for a minute because Kate said something that was weird. Kate was like, well, he doesn't understand that because, you know, he was born in the money. You know, he was he was born into DeMaro's, you know, born into being DeMaro or whatever. And Jennifer was like, well, he doesn't act like that, you know, so that, that, that really doesn't track. I felt like her, her reasonings for, you know, Chad, not, you know, Chad not knowing and stuff like that, like, she doesn't want Chad to know, which start to become more flimsier and flimsier by the minute. But yeah, you know, um, Jake, you know, there's, there's really no console in that, you know, once my practically... Pretty much omits that, you know, she doesn't want to be with you because she feels embarrassed by you. There's really nothing you can do. And that's pretty much where it ends off at. Well, where it really ends off is that, um, you know, Abigail's like, you know, I'm going to start to go look for him. And, you know, mind you, Abigail is in Jake's room and Jake doesn't have on a shirt. And I'm just not that thinking at some point, why don't you put on a shirt? Like, I don't, I don't really understand that. Why, why didn't you put on a shirt at any point in time? But, okay, sure, whatever. Um, so Abigail opens the door. Chad is right there. Now, optics-wise, this looks pretty bad. All right, this, this, <laughs> there's no other way around it. This dude already suspects that you're cheating, and you're just hanging out in his room without a shirt on. I mean, granted, even if he did have on a shirt, he'll still probably think there's something up, but... Him not having on a shirt doesn't help. And I don't understand. You know, whatever. Um, <laughs> anyway, she opens the door. She sees Chad. And Chad has this look in his face. And I'm like, is this the look where he's about to lose it? Or is this the look where he's like, I just want to sit there and have a talk with you. Or slowly lose it. You know, not just outright start yelling. Just kind of build up to it. I guess we have to wait till Monday to find out. And like I said, that was pretty much about it. Um, I can't think of anything else that really happened. For most of the part, oh, that's not true. One other thing did happen. At some point, Jack is sitting there looking through um, the stuff that they found. You know, all the news clippings and articles and stuff like that of like his family and him and everything. And Gwen walks in the room. Jack turns around and he looks at her like, you know, he's, he's sitting there talking and stuff like, well, what does she want with all this stuff, you know, like, what's, what's going on? And he turns around and he looks at Gwen, and Gwen has this shocked look on her face, like, and I'm just sitting there thinking, man, I would love to see Monday's episode and see how she's going to get out of this one, because I'm going to be honest with you, if she somehow managed to turn this around with Abigail and, and Jack, and, you know, everyone knows at this point what's, how is she going to spend this one? And does she actually have any money when they decide to boot her ass out? Because, um, at this point, you know, she's not going to be living anymore, right? Like, she's just not. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll just wait and see. I think I'm actually looking forward to Monday's episode, to be honest. Um. Just because everything seems like it's coming to a head. Everything seems like it's coming to a head. All the lies and the deception that Gwen has been doing is coming to an end. I mean, it's coming to a head. Or an end, pretty much. I, I guess we'll wait and see on Monday. So, it should be interesting, to say none the least. Um, like I said, the only part that was really kind of boring a little bit was the Lonnie and Eli stuff. I mean, it was nice. It was cute. You know, babies, yay. And, you know, he finally named... Their children, um, 
But besides that, nothing really interesting happened except for towards the end. So, I guess we'll just wait and see. With that being said, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe. I will catch everyone in the next review. And thank you for listening to me rant.